Well, the dumpling bar uh, won a prestigious award the uh, in the week. And Big Bertha's uh, showing at who's boss. It's coming down quite rapid now. Just that far end where they've got to be careful and do brick by brick until they can get it down. But uh, Bertha's showing on the way. And Big Bertha's round to the side now. We've come round and we can uh, almost get in the cab here. Trouble with that uh, metal showing it who's boss. Got a wide sort of bucket on because normally they, what I call the choppy choppy thing. That'll go th cut through the, the steel. I don't know whether this has got the same power. It's obviously wider, so you can probably fetch more down per per load. Now we've got little Bertha, <laughs> big Bertha's daughter. We've got two Berthas going. And once again, the answer to wheel, nobody's here. And it does look a bloody mess, and broken bricks and God knows what. There's one the brick there that sort of stands out that's wibbly wobbly. I don't know what's happened to that one. The others are all nicely cemented. That one's from by the barn. Well, they don't seem to be making any progress at all. I'm saying to make progress, if I actually turn up and do some work. Well, there's an official poster for the post office now. Now Big Bertha's still working. We've got more or less the top floor of this back section uh, gone now. Just that, whatever it is on the top. Two big uh, metal strips. That's more than a strip, aren't they? Now, well, Big Bertha's having a rest, and we got Mini Mini Bertha. It's interesting now because we've got all those posts. I wonder if you knock them posts and whether the rest comes down. Well, she's got this continuous problem. We've got loads and loads of bricks and rubbish. And you have to stop to get rid of that to get to the rest of it. I've got a good view inside while the gates are open. And mini Bertha. Big Berth is having a rest. You can see the amount of bricks and rubbish to get rid of. Just talking to the boss, and it's all got to come down, and the concrete here has got to <coughs> come up. And he has heard that the uh, project might be put back for six months by the council. Good old Cheshire's. I thought they couldn't do that because it was on a national lottery and they have to do it within a certain period of time. 
so we'll see if we can investigate that. I've just been talking to the boss, so it's a demolition apparently. Big birth there. I forget the exact figure, but it's like £16,000 PSI on it. Blue, the pipes this morning. The oil from it shot everywhere over the exhaust and set the blood thing on fire. Obviously, this has got it back uh, working again. I did say then, post, they could knock them out and it'd all fall down, take it down as a more controlled way. And they've got to have fun getting this concrete job because it's very concrete. This section's got to come up because this is just going to be a car park and then they will leave and whoever's doing the building will sort of take over. Well, Chester Street's got uh, traffic control again. A big lorry messing about. So they're never happy unless they're messing about, are they? Well, the wheel's still not finished. It's going on longer than bloody building the Wall of China, as we keep saying. I mean, it's weeks and weeks, and it's still nowhere near bloody finished. You could have built a new bus station while you were waiting. Well, it has been confirmed that uh, on the old Argos car park, this building in the corner is a uh, substation, I can't think of the word then, supplying the shops and possibly electric charging for cars. Well, today we've got the mini uh, Bertha. Mini Bertha's got the choppy choppy things I call them, which is like a giant uh, vice which will cut through virtually anything. So we can see the progress. We should this week probably be getting this this section down. Again, the problem is such a small space; they've got to do so much. And they've got to clear the bloody rubbish in order to be able to get to the to the rest of the site. And they have to sort of separate it metal from other things. On the other side we can't actually see uh, machine working, it's right there at the end on that corner. We can see the amount of rubbish we've got here, so obviously we've got to get rid of that. In order to get the, that lot. And if you look at the scaffold then, you can see how much we've come down on the uh, scaffolding side. Well, it's like two sections, there's this section and then separate building on the other side. Well, the car park's still not open. We have got, looks like the paying machines there. I'm thinking, where you put your ticket in or get your ticket. Lots of the plants and there's lots of people on site sort of digging, putting the plants in. Big gang of them down there. Still can't determine what the blasted plants are. The other day we did have nine people, yes, nine, in high fizz trying to work out how they could move this pavement blockage back a couple of feet so people are not walking on the road. Obviously it's not worked because we're nine of them. You still have to walk on the road. There is a diversion, but who's going to walk half a mile round instead of just walking on the road? Well, we have got a new shop open, Betsy's. I'll say open. It's got the red carpet out, but you can't actually get in. But having said that, the uh, door's just opening. It's a new burger place. Well, it's going to open. Well, we have managed to get in, so we can see the. Uh, going on. All the staff are riding because they don't want me on video, but nevertheless. 
selection of uh, yummy stuff. See they've got this bottom corner off now, so that's down to almost ground level, just sort of on the last bit there. So the interesting bit's going to be that to big bit in the middle. Still got the water going to keep the rust down. I can't see what they've done by hand of getting this top section off here. So that'll be ready to uh, be pulled down probably any time soon. Because with all these cabins and how close it is, we've had to do it by hand. So perhaps take another section down by hand before they start knocking it down. I'll say that bit on the top's the bit to look down for. Well, High Street, they've now got the uh, go ahead for the tattoo parlour in High Street so that'll be opening soon no doubt well the boating lake by uh, Argos is really really high today really excelled itself a new substation they're putting in they've got bloody big holes some really big holes well, then this will be for electric cars, so it's just for like the local area. So we're in the market centre today and three new shops open. The first one being this final shop and these two nice people are going to tell us all about it, what they do and why they do it. Hello, hi, uh, I'm Chris, uh, this is Jem. Hi. Now, we own and run Vinyl Destination, which is uh, opening today in Crewe. Um, we sell brand new and pre-loved vinyl and everything to do with uh, films and music. So, t-shirts, mugs, tote bags, uh, everything. So it's, it's, it's fun. Uh, yeah, so, so come down and have a look. Anything that we don't have, we can get. Um, and hopefully everything that you do already want, we've got it. So, yeah. Come on down and have a look. And you do buy records if somebody comes with something? We, yeah, we will do, yeah, to a degree, yeah, definitely. I would always say if you've got stuff um, that you think might be worth uh, some money or, or something to us, then take a photo of it and email it to us at vinyldestinationcrew at gmail.com and yeah, we'll have a look and we'll get back to you and then you can bring it in and we can have a look. Yeah, and you, you do the, the pre-loved as well? Yes, yeah, so there's, uh, yeah, there's all, all kinds of stuff, so there's, there's um, old stock albums that are brand new and sealed and then there's pre-loved albums which are classics and just a bit of everything really from and the the, the pre-loved you can actually listen to yes on yeah the, you can come and have a look if you want to make sure that it's all fine we've we've been through every vinyl and cleaned them and make sure they're okay which they are and it's like going back to the 50s when you used to go yeah, in, yeah, yeah, never definitely. bought it you just went in and yeah. <laughs> listened to it uh, but no yeah feel free come and have a, have a listen and uh, yeah get involved and you've got all sorts of mugs yeah yeah mugs, mugs bottles badges Key rings, stickers, the, the old Marshall. Yeah, key ring holders for your hallways. All sorts of things. Yeah, loads of stuff. <laughs> well, the next shop is the uh, the barbers, and this is the gentleman that's going to cut your hair. Hi, uh, you right there. My name's Anthony Vickers. I've um, I'm born and bred in Crew, basically. Um, 30 years old. I've been doing barbering and hairdressing for the past 14 years, so, and just uh, finally got me in a little shopping crew and in the market all it's a prime place for me and I love it loved it ever since I came along uh, come here quite often myself anyway just for something that was missing and just want to give some back to the community I've been brought up in and what, what sort of prices do you charge? Uh, prices range from um, 10 up to 30 depending on what services you have done um, I sell uh, the Slick Gorilla product range as well which is like a, a hair styling powder and a sea salt spray but I can also get hold of any sort of like wax or matte products or anything like that and hairsprays. It's, it's only men's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I do, I do, I do do predominantly men's, but I do occasionally do some women's hair as well. <coughs> do you a special rate for LAPs? Yes. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my, my OAP rate ranges between 10 and 13, depending on what I've got to do. It's a miserable, godforsaken, bloody day. It was nice and sunny yesterday. And we're still getting things down, slowly but surely. Can they knock so much down? Then they've got to sort it out. He's sorting out bits of this and bits of that. So it either gets recycled metal or. Well, they have got most of the plants in now. Still more to go in. There's a fancy sign now. I'm not exactly sure what it's supposed to really be. But, uh, Nevertheless, earlier in the week there was those uh, nine people in high vis deciding how to make this safer. And obviously nine people wasn't enough because they haven't made it any safer. They still have to walk on the road. There's still confusion on the uh, dates. As far as I'm still aware, the bus station has got to be May Bank Holiday because it's closed for two days and they need that to get the old or the new current bus station removed in order to open the other so there's not much leeway on that where there's compressed confusion is the fact that uh, there's possibly three dates if that's the bus station, then there's a car park, which the BBC are saying is end of May. And then there's the date when it's handed over to the council, so there's three dates. So it's far from out at the moment, anyway. It's definitely the bank holiday for the bus station.